Welcome back to another episode of the Sporting Life Show brought to you by Shy and Kennels. And your Orvis endorsed wing shooting guide, Darrell Smith here. And thanks to our sponsors, Beretta USA for the finest in sporting goods, Benchmade Knife Company for keeping us sharp, and Yukonuba Sporting Dog for keeping us fueled up, and Hunt and Field Magazine for, of course, keeping us informed afield. All right, folks, so we are on another episode working for spring training, uh, getting everything situated and just kind of making this whole thing work with Joker um, coming up. He's done really well his first year, so I want to go ahead and start breaking him. So what you have here uh, is on point, and by breaking him, I mean set it a wing shot, release, and retrieve. Here, style him up. Um you know, just because I like doing it, I think it makes a dog feels good. Um, and yeah, man, just look at him. He's got a great point. I accidentally hit the record button there, but uh, he's got a great point. He's standing. He's very wise, very smart dog. Um, and of course, I've got to get my photos uh, just real statuesque. He's, he's my setter Whoop. foundation and, and who it is that I'm looking forward to um, continuing his line. He's from Alder Fork English Setters. Paul Cook, uh, he's just standing there, man. I, I just, I love watching him work. This is the dog that I believe almost makes birds happen when I need him in a pinch. Um, is you know when I'm out guiding, like I said, he had a fantastic first season. Um, great coat. He's the type of setter that does well in heat, uh, which is what one of the things Paul, you know, emphasized in his breeding, um, and just a well Beautiful. built Beautiful. dog. So on this particular uh, session, you know, everything was great, but sometimes you run into those instances Whoops. where things just kind of go south and the birds don't want right. to cooperate. So this is what this episode was about. Um, and I had no idea this was actually going to happen, of course. Um, and that's where you kind of run the risk of, of hen raised quail a lot of the times especially when it's hot i think sometimes that heat suppresses them um but you know i was taking my time and a lot of the times i do this with a dog just to make sure he's staunch and he can maintain that focus in the area it may take me a long time to get two birds um you know hunting out in oregon or hunting out in nebraska you walk in big sand hills and stuff it may take a second so i want that dog to be able to sit there for me as long as I need him to to be able to be successful. All right. We will. And of course, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to Dogs Unlimited for keeping us well supplied and stocked on the finest in goods. Check out that Cody Hunt gear selection of products that they have from the training belt to the Upland Bird release. So this is where it all starts to kind of fall apart. Um, with no fault on the technology and the equipment, let me just say that first and foremost, um, you run into this situation where some pen birds just decide not to fly. So I was in kind of a situation right here where I wasn't sure if Joker was going to stay steady if I went in to flush. So I thought my best option would be to try to throw sticks or throw pine cones to get that bird to flush, thinking that, you know, if I just kind of hit something around it or even hit the, the device, it might spook that bird into wanting to flush. Well, none of that worked, as you can see, after multiple, multiple attempts. Whoop. 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 
still don't want to flush. So after this last Whoop. attempt, I honestly just kind of got over it and was willing to risk stepping away to get that bird to flush. Because even then, all I was doing was just pushing a bird, and you can see in the lower right corner of my foot, it still didn't want to flush. It just decided it wanted to walk. Um, I'm just really impressed with Joker maintaining his steadiness through this entire situation, um, which is great. I thought it was still a great training opportunity. You can see the bird right there still not wanting to get up, and finally it went up. It still didn't uh, go that far, but I got what I needed out of the flush. Um and I walked back over him, over to him. I typically wouldn't have fired this close to him, but I walked back over and fired the blank pistol because I wanted to make sure he knew not to move. Um, I just felt like there would have been a lot of temptation um, for him to move if I was in any other place. And he still stayed steady, um, you know, and, and unaffected. So I think all in all, I mean, that was great. And here's the release to retrieve. Just a new concept Fetch that I'm teaching Fetch. all of my dogs uh, going in to Fetch. the next guiding Fetch. season. This is Fetch. the next step after uh, finishing. And what I think Fetch it does up. is give the dog good an dog. opportunity to get the retrieve come, if come, they come. see that as a reward come, come, come. Um, outside come, of the come, point, come. but also good dog. the expectation good that boy. they Dip. must stay steady and good staunch. Dog. Um, whether All I release right. them Come to here, retrieve buddy. or not. Very good and so stuff, it keeps man. my dogs broke, field Very trial stuff, stuff when I need it, and it keeps them good steady Lord, to wing shot retrieve. Going on, man. Uh, very, very, very good stuff. And here's a piece from my sketchbook uh, that I had done of Big Joker. Um, just as we move into the season, I really, really like this dog. This piece was actually from uh my first season in the sand hills of nebraska and that was him uh on point pointing the sharp tail it was just a piece that i had done from my sketches and uh, i've actually used this piece um in a design in a jacket that i designed um for this original dog man idea that i was working with and kind of toying with but you'll see that jacket uh this year in my upcoming show in Thomasville, Georgia, uh, during the Wildlife Arts Festival Week. Uh, the opening will be on December 6th, uh, 2024, in Thomasville, Georgia, at Grassroots Coffee. Um, and the art space there is fantastic. I mean, it's in partnership with the Thomasville Center for the Arts, who I've worked with for a very, very, very long time now at this point. They've been fantastic partners. Uh, Sam McCoy is curating the show um, and many thanks to Miriam Mirabzada for uh, inviting me to be the artist in residence featured artist this year. Um, it means so much. So thank everyone uh, and come check it out. You'll see this piece maybe uh, and definitely way more my way larger pieces, but my pieces um, that follow the gospel of great dog men. So check it out. And uh, we'll see y'all next time.